Dude, oh my God, you guys, I'm so excited. Because you guys remember when I got those little tadpoles in the mail? Well, guess what? They're no longer tadpoles anymore and they're fresh out of the water. So that means that it's time to make another bioactive build. And in today's video, I'm gonna tell you how I acclimated them right out of the water so they can leap onto the new world. My name's Ryan and you're watching Mighty Morphin Reptiles. Let's roll the tape. <laughs> Okay, when I started noticing that they were getting their front arms, I would really lower the water level and then tilt the cup over like this and just had it enough where they could actually crawl out on their own when they did. And once they crawled out, I put them in a 32 ounce deli cup. And what was really cool was like, they still had their tails, right? But in case you guys didn't know, they don't need to eat food at all for the next three days because they actually absorb that tail slowly throughout the next few days and that gives them nutrients. And then after they got their nutrients, I put them in this 32 ounce deli cup and I'll admit they were completely like shy at first. They would always be hiding under the leaf, whatever. I put in about like 15 fruit flies for them to eat and there was some left over. I just wait till they ran out of that. Then after about a week or two, they all started coming out and now look at them. They're all bold and look how cute they are, dude. I just love it. So I got a cobalt tutorius right here and then I got some of my dream dart frog right here. This is called a Vanessa and it's actually supposed to be completely crisp white and black, but when they're babies, they'll look more like the powder blues and see how, the, how they got the blue legs. Those will actually turn completely white when they get older. And I'm so excited to have some of these guys. And now let's get to setting up their little frog grow up in. So in today's build, I'm just gonna be using this 10 gallon head lying around. I usually prefer exoterras, but since this is a grow out tank, this will work. Then I tilt the tank on its backside. So I totally wanted this build to have a background and I wanted to cover the whole entire backside. So I used expanding foam to start it. So I wanted this enclosure to have a few ledges for the frogs to climb on. So I broke off a few pieces of styrofoam and placed them right into the foam. Then I thought to myself, it'd be kind of cool to have some little caves with these little suckers. So I decided to grab some two inch nursery pots and put them here and there. So I use about four total. And then I cover up with some expanding foam. Then after it cured out, I flipped the tank on its left side and then I put more expanding foam down and I decided to put another cave over here and then some styrofoam. Then I repeated the exact same process on this side and then I decided to put the nursery pot right here. I think that's a good spot. And then again for this side, I decided to add some more styrofoams on the lower level and on the upper level. And then I covered all the ledges in this vivarium with expanding foam so this will help blend it in and not let it look jaggy. And now I'm gonna be spending the next 30 or 40 minutes of my life carving it out. And in case you guys didn't know, the reason why I have to carve out the smooth surfaces of my background is because, is one, because the media will not apply if I don't. And all the porous part that you get after carving it out is what makes it stick. And then I use a rotary tool for those really tight spaces. Okay guys, I totally lied. It took me like almost two hours to do this, but I'm done. All right, now that I'm done carving it out, it's time to add the media. I'll be using dry lock, and then I'll be using some cement liquid coloring. And I mix the two together until I get the consistency of color that I want, which is dark gray. And pro tip guys, when you're doing this, just pour it around everywhere and then brush it all in. This will save you a lot of time. Make it nice and thick like chocolate cake, thick. And let's face the facts guys, this is totally ugly by itself. I mean, it just looks boring. Just all that dark gray doing nothing but we can cover this up and make it look more realistic. And I do that by adding wash play sand and I just grab it and sprinkle it everywhere. And it's done and this is what it looks like and it looks so much nicer I must say like it just has more of that naturalistic look and the caves kind of blend in more and I also believe this will give the frogs a lot more friction to actually climb on so yeah I'm totally loving it and then after it cured out all the way I gave it a really good rinsing and then I took some measurements and I cut out some filter foam in my measurements and I'm gonna be using this as a drainage layer and I put it in right here and then I measure it up to about one inch thick and for my substrate barrier, I'm just using window mesh screen. And then I add my homemade substrate. Then I use a spatula to rake it around, give that depth of field look. And then I get it up to about three inches thick. And then I add some oak leaves and I get it up to just probably about an inch thick. The frogs will really appreciate this. 
And before I start planting, I grab my mister and then I give the vivarium a really good soaking. This will give a lot of moisture before planting. All right, now that I'm finally done with this, let's get to planting this bad boy. And I'm excited to show you my grow out tent. All right, come with me this way, guys. So right here is one of my spare rooms and this is my grow out tent right here. This is where I prop all of my plants at. Bam! Got a bunch of little bromeliads here, some rattlesnake plants. Ooh, I gotta show you guys this one. So right here is all my favorite rarer plants, you know? So I got some varicosums. I got quite a few of these going. Like, dude, look how beautiful that is. How can you not guys like that? Sadly, I won't be using that. I'll be using all these little guys right here and some in this tank. All right, and I'm gonna be starting with the background plants first, and I'm gonna be using Pilea aluminum. I just love the silver texture on these leaves, and these will grow a little taller. And, and with just this vivarium, it'll add so much contrast compared to that dark background. Then I'm gonna plant one over here on the back side, then one over here in the front right corner. Then I'm gonna be using this begonia amphioxus, and I just love this plant. This is like one of the holy grails of begonias. And right here on the left side will do. Then right here, we have Ramo Moss. And you see where it gets its name from, from all the colors. And I really love the blue iridescence right here. And I thought it'd be really cool if I had it like inside the caves, like actually trailing out of it. So when I was looking at the caves, I thought it kind of needed like some kind of outline. So I'm going to be using like a little bit of Spanish moss just to help contrast it and make it pop out a little more. And then I thought the ledges could use a little bit of greenery. So I decided to actually use some Pilea Depressa and I love the little baby tears on it. You gotta admit, they are pretty cute. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Give it time, it'll trail out everywhere. So I totally thought it'd be boring if it didn't have any pieces of wood in there. So I've been soaking some wood for a couple of days now and I'm about to actually glue some java moss to it and then put them in. And to help break out the monogamy of all the leaf litter, I decided to add some more Pilea Depressa throughout it. And then I'll be adding some Pilea ovalis. It's more of a darker tone plant, but it'll add some good contrast throughout the vivarium. Put one in the back left and then the front right side. And for my microfauna, I'll be adding some springtails. The frogs will love eating this. And then I'll be using dwarf isopods. The frogs should like eating these little critters too. Then I take some more measurements. Then I cut a piece of glass to fit right over the lid just right. And I leave a one inch ventilation over here. And with how I cut it, this fits perfect over the top. So now I don't have to worry about a screen. Hmm. Yeah, this is pretty ugly. But how can I take care of it? Oh, that's easy. Vinyl paper. Yeah, it's like a yo-yo. You like that? All right, I've been waiting so long for this. Let's put these little adorable angels in finally. Dude, look how cute that one is. That was the first one to come out of water right there. I like him. And what was really cool about, see, he just ate right there. See, that's what I mean. That's when I knew they were comfortable and I felt like it was totally ready to go inside the vivarium. I see a powder blue back there. And guys, I wanted to mention real quick that you should not mix poison dart frog species together. However, since this is just a grow out tank, this is totally fine. They'll be here for like maybe just a month or two until I get both of their vivariums set up for the different species. But until then, I'm gonna just love watching these little critters leaping around, doing little dart frog things, you know, licking everything, twinkling their toes everywhere. This is gonna be dope. All right, let's get to feeding these little suckers. Yeah, what's really nice about how this is set up, I could just tilt them in just like this. Huh, I guess they're not very hungry right now. Just must be shy. I mean, they are pretty little and even these little Madagascar flies are pretty big for them. Look how cute he is, just poking his head out from under the leaf. 
Dude, he's taking a fat whopper right now. Look at that. I don't know why it's fascinating, but I just like watching my frogs poop. Don't judge me. And I gotta say, I just really love dart frogs. It's just something about them. Like in the morning, I just like to have some coffee and just like watch them for a couple hours. They make really awesome display pets. <clears throat> and if you guys are interested in watching these guys grow and when I make those YouTube variants, be sure to subscribe. And also, you know, I really don't really like using these like 10 gallon tanks. I really prefer the Exoterras because it's so much easier to actually like open it up and do all the maintenance. But this will work for just a little grow out tank and plus i'm actually raising up some like fine spot lucamella tadpoles right now and then i have some more eggs right here like here here's one of my clutches so i figured it would be actually a really good idea to already make this grow out tank because by the time these guys are finished growing out of it these guys will be ready to go in next so so it was funny when i was telling my buddies about me building this good little grow out tank my buddy sean was like dude i'm surprised you don't have frogs in your bathroom already your whole house is like a terrarium and I'm not gonna lie guys, I totally thought it'd be kind of cute putting it there right on the counter, wash my hands, see little frogs leap around. But no, I decided against it. I thought it'd be really cute right here on my actual coffee table. And like when I'm watching like YouTube or something, I can see little frogs jumping around. I mean, like, I just can't help it. I just want to watch these guys grow. That's why I made this little vivarium. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm weird. All right guys, let me know down in the comments section below, which one do you like the most? Do you like Colbat Tinctorious better or the Vanessa Tinctorious better? Personally, as you guys know, I like the Vanessas a lot more and that's gonna be my next breeding project someday. And thanks for joining me in this quick vlog today. And if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to boop that like button. And if you guys are interested in watching some of my other dart frog builds, then check out these videos right over here. They'll be right at the end screen. All right guys, my name's Ryan and you're watching Mighty Morphin Reptiles.